Hey everybody, welcome to another Goody Reader video comparison. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we have the Apple iPad Mini versus the Acer Iconia W3. So this is a fully featured Windows 8 tablet that's capable of running legacy apps and the Apple iPad, which really, what else, what else do I have to say about it? Let's talk a little bit about specs. You have an 8.1 inch screen on the Acer and you have a 7.9 inch screen on the iPad mini. The resolution on Acer is 1280 by 800. The resolution on the mini is 1024 by 768. Uh, the W3 by Acer has a dual core 1.8 gigahertz processor, while the iPad mini only has a one gigahertz processor. And you do have front facing and rear facing video cams on the Acer you have 2 megapixels on the front and rear on the Apple you have 1.2 megapixels on the front and 5 megapixels on the rear the real big thing is is price and I think that they're both equally comparable. Uh, the iPad mini is about 330 to about 350. The W3 is about 369. So they're fairly comparable with prices and they also give you very unique experiences. These tablets operate very differently. You'll see here that on the home screen of the W3, you have the Windows 8 experience. So you have your little cubes and rectangles and things uh, change live whereas on Apple it's very simple just icons nothing more no widgets no nothing another bonus for the W3 is that you have desktop mode which is a full desktop experience so you can see here you can drag um, windows around you can box things and uh, this is actually a good time to show you guys the uh, storage. Although it is a 32 gigabyte device, it says here you only get 7.89 gigs free out of 28. So out of the 32, you get 28 usable, and out of the 28, all of what all of the stock apps and updates and all that kind of stuff takes up everything down to about seven to ten gigabytes of storage. So. Uh, be, make a note of that, that you're going to need an SD card. Yeah, uh, it supports up to a 32 gig SD card. And you also have Acer S Cloud Storage, which is a free cloud storage service. You can save your photos, your pictures, your media files, and then access it on your PC, on other tablets, on your smartphone, as long as they all have the Acer Cloud app. And Apple works very similar. They have iCloud, so if I take a picture on here, it automatically appear on my iPhone or on my MacBook Air and uh, whatnot. So these are the different home screens. They both do very different things. Uh, the app stores also are very different as well. If we just fire it up here, you see that with the, the Acer, it's only in landscape mode. It actually does not go into portrait mode, whereas Apple, of course, does. No matter what you do, you cannot turn this into portrait mode. We've tried. Um, it's quite silly because um, things you might be using it in portrait mode for books and comics and all that kind of thing and then you go to the store and you're like, oh wait, I can't have portrait anymore. So Yeah, it's, it's just funny that most of the Windows 8, the W3, does things fine in landscape mode or portrait mode but when you flip to you know when you activate certain things it's only one mode in particular and i think that that's a deal breaker with the store yeah i mean you want to be able to switch perspectives and i like the fact that apple lets you seamlessly switch perspectives i really don't see what's holding microsoft back from making its store viable on a portrait mode as it would work on a landscape Very device. Weird. But with that aside, I mean, the stores, there's really no comparison. Apple has more first party uh, apps, but I think that the evolutionary growth of the Windows 8 stores come along fairly far in a very short period of time. I think it's just because there's so many millions and millions of desktops in the world that are now running this operating system, the developers know that they have an international captive audience. So you have all the mainstream apps, Skype, eBay, and all that type of stuff. It's very hard to see what any of this actually means. That's another problem. All the cubes look the same and they're all kind of different colors for no reason. So um, everything's just really muddled together. Yeah, whereas this, it's very, it's very designed clear. very well. It's very clear as to what all these are. This, all no. cluttered. You, 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 you'd spend 20 minutes just going through a page of these because you're like, okay, what's that? What's that? Oh, I see. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite silly. 
Never okay. liked the layout of that. So in this comparison video, we're mainly going to focus on the e-reading experience, but we'll also show you how videos uh, and sound and uh, everything like that works. So uh, first of all, we have uh, the Kindle uh, app open here. And you can see we have nighttime reading mode on. Just to show you guys the differences between they have uh, nighttime reading mode and what white would look like. So you see here, this is the default screen for both. We're on the set, we're on the exact same page, and you can see that you can swipe to change pages. Nothing changes live on the W3. So but everything changes live on the Mini. So what you'll have to do is change the text, change the preferences, and apply settings. And uh, it's very inconvenient and it's all too convenient on the mini yeah uh, single single clicks on the w3 for highlights and notes whereas you'd need to long press on the uh, Android versions and iOS versions but either way they're both on under the same account so they synchronize pages and they, they both perform very well I mean you don't need much nowadays to uh, um, run um, a, an e-reading e app so uh, needless to say, they both perform very well. Yeah, I mean, I would probably say the mini edges out Windows 8 reading apps in general because it dynamically updates the text. Uh, most apps for Windows 8, you know, these little tiny apps, they're not really designed for like these dynamic cool updates like they are for like Android or iOS. So I would probably say for the average e-reading app, and if you we put the Kindle app side by side, Kindle app performs way better for iOS than it does for Windows 8. Right. And so after looking at the ebook experience, we're going to juxtapose this by looking at something very image heavy, which is a comic book. So we're going to fire up Comixology on both of them. And you can see the screens are fairly similar, uh, 8.1 versus 7.9. So it's a minus, you know, it's basically, you know, not very much. Pretty much the same, yeah. yeah. Um, you have a really slow scroll here you have a very fast scroll if you double tap a panel you can go into guided view although the uh, resolution is a little bit bigger on the w3 it looks like apple's making better use of uh screen and it's actually a lot more rich colors look a lot better it's hard to say like a lot of the times with comic books it, it's not like they were drawn for super HD quality. I mean, they're drawn pretty well for print. Right. And then they're just transcribed to digital, unless you have the digital first, like from a, a Marvel Infinity or Marvel AR, you know, things that were developed exclusively for digital properties. Now you'll notice this, if we pinch and zoom, snaps back. Whereas if we pinch and zoom on here, you can pretty much go endlessly down to the very last pixel. But uh, that's always been kind of a weird feature that Windows tablets have. Yeah, they don't have a snap feature. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, suffice to say, you can go with guided view, or you could just like simply just read panel by panel. I guess we haven't downloaded that. But yeah, you can pinch and zoom on particular frames. This is usually how I read, because I like to get the particular thing. I like to swipe and zoom and things like that. But the, I would say for comics, they look pretty even. I would say that Apple, I think, turns pages a bit faster, if that matters to you. M minor differences. Yeah, but pretty well the same. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is look at the newspaper experience. So we'll fire up Press Reader and check out uh, a recent issue of the Toronto Star. So we'll go and swipe through to get to the beginning. And here we are. This is what both of them look like by default without any pinch and zooms or double taps or anything like that. So you can see this is a lot more slim. It's almost like a 16 by 9, whereas this is still, I think, Apple's still sporting 4 by 3. Yeah, it's, it's, it seems like a little bit wider, right. for sure. It's more of a square. Yeah. This is an old style of uh, aspect ratio that not a lot of people use anymore. So you can see here that, um, get some color in the shot. Apple's always had just the best screens, I think. I mean, they're just, the colors pop. It's really clear, really bright. And if you click on any of the blue 
highlighted um, articles, as you can see here, it's more of a lighter blue. You can actually click on that, and you go into an ebook mode, which is a uh, um, puts heavy emphasis on the text, so right. it's way easier to read than reading at like a muddled digital replica. Now, something about Apple that's always been interesting is you see if you swipe all the way to the right, that's it. You're just in that one article, the uh, Backlash article here. But if we swipe to the right on Android or Windows, you actually move on to the next article. So now we're in the railways, and now we have student article. But you can't do that on Apple. You actually have to close it, go to the next page, and then catch up. So um, I don't see why that is. Well, you can actually click but, this button. Too right, but I mean, it. in terms of the scrolling, yeah. because that's kind of weird how when you just swipe to the left like this um it loads up as it goes so uh maybe it's to cut down on load times but uh that's just you know we're showing differences here so yeah totally so this is mainly what you could expect out of the newspaper experience uh for both of them so the next thing that we're going to do is look at a digital magazine as one of the final ebook reading experiences that we're going to look at. So we have the same edition of Surfer Magazine and we decided to go with this one because again it has a lot of different colors and you could see how both of the screens really shine. So although the W8 or W3 rather has a little bit better resolution, I think the iPad is looking a little bit better overall. It's actually not letting you zoom on, uh, and both of these are purchased magazines, and it doesn't seem to be letting you zoom on the W3. Uh, I think it's just been the limitations of right. the Windows 8 app. And what you see at the bottom here is you do have a zoom view. It's not very, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know why you have to have the extra step. You yeah, know? why and, can't you just pinch and zoom? And you can and pinch and it. zoom now, but you can't even go all the way back out. Yeah, so, unless you turn zoom view off. Exactly, here, let's go like this. Watch this. Oh, I can't even, can't even get it centered. Yeah, really limited on the, uh, the windows. You can't even move it over. No. Oh. That's pretty good. <laughs> well, <laughs> not really. Yeah. But this is, you know, just to give you guys an idea. Um, so to get out of this, scroll up, go to full view, and then you can turn the page. <laughs> All right. So it's we'll just, could, we'll just turn a few images and let it pause, just so <laughs> if you guys want to pause the video and actually look. Pretty different if you really look at it. I'll go back to here. Colors are different. That's the colors are really different. And like, what's with these big bars here? You know? Yeah, I mean, we, we saw that on the HTC One phone. That no matter where you are, there's always these huge bars there. Look, that look at all these borders. One, two, three. <laughs> It's not making the best use of the screen. It really no. Isn't. And I'm a huge advocate for effective use of screen real estate. I mean. If you can fit more of an image here on a smaller screen, why would going with a bigger screen make a big difference to anybody? Exactly. You're just you're just tricking people. And this is why we we do these reading experiences because this may not be indicative to this one app, these borders here, but this may be indicative for 40% of all the apps that you'll download that are Windows 8 official apps, and you'll run into this problem. Right. So it's very important to see things like that. In the end, I mean, iPad mini, very effective use of screen real estate. I think it's a little bit wider of a screen, so it shows more of an image. And I think the images are actually a little bit better on lower resolution than they are here on the higher resolution, but of course, we'll always let readers uh, gauge for themselves. For sure. uh, the final two things that we're going to show you are landscape views and we're going to show you a game and we'll also show you a Netflix video to see how the speaker quality and video handles it side by side.
So we chose this My Little Pony cartoon because it's filled with color, a lot of things moving on the screen at the same time. You probably heard from the speakers that the W3 has very, very quiet speakers. They're not very crisp, they're not very loud at all. You find yourself kind of leaning towards it to hear what's going on. Not very, not very good. And they're at the uh, bottom too, so they're not even being muffled by the back. So, um, And that's really no excuse because the Apple iPad mini speakers are in the exact same place, the bottom here. And they were very loud, very high quality, very crisp. Um, I thought they performed really well. So yeah, I mean, I, I think that the video could pretty well comparable. Yeah, I wouldn't say one stood out more than the other, but I will say that the Apple iPad Mini audio experience way louder than the W3. So if loud external speaker, like you know, speakers and how it lights up a room, if that's important to you. Uh, W3 may not be the best model. Right. And note where, yes, this is upside down is because we have the speakers on the side here and uh, we didn't want it getting muffled by the edge of uh, the iPad. Okay, final thing that we want to show you is uh, a game here called Soulcraft. Just to show you how the same game will perform on each device because this is again indicative to almost any game that you would play that's the same on both devices. Right. So we'll just dive right in basically. Yeah, we'll go to the same place there. You don't want Dragon City? No. <laughs> Not right now. I'll wait till yours loads there. Now this loaded faster than the apples. Let's just uh, skip this so we can get into some movement mode here. So... You know, for having a slower processor, it looks like the iPad is moving a lot smoother. Die, you dire wolf. How come I'm not getting any? Oh, here it is. No. Wow, this screen is hot. Oh, I've tapped the button here. But you can see here that this is actually moving a lot more smoothly. Let's just turn this down. <laughs> Getting carried away there, Mike. <laughs> um, the Apple actually performs a little bit... It's actually moving a lot more fluidly than the um, uh, Acer. Uh, surprising because this is essentially a uh, uh, tablet computer slate. So, um, you know, kudos to Apple. But uh, they both... They loaded roughly the same. They can both handle it no problem, really. I mean, this is with everything else running, too. So we have pretty much every app we've ever opened so far still running, including yeah. the desktop. So, so In the end, true multitasking, uh, you know, cloud storage, uh, being able to run Windows Legacy apps, so full version of Microsoft Office, Steam, StarCraft, Black Ops 2, you know, whatever you want, as long as memory is accepting of you, you could run. So it's an extension of your desktop life. Anything you can install on the desktop PC, you can install on this tablet, except it's 8.1 inches and it's mobile. Right. Uh, Apple iPad Mini, most of the games were made for, uh, you know, the original iPad and were, you know, downscaled and developers have the ability to customize apps and splash screens and everything for this display. I would probably say that the, the Mini and the W3 side by side, the Mini may be a good investment for casual users, whereas the W3 would be great for like the power users that are heavily invested in the Windows ecosystem. Uh, the cons, um, the, the screen, and uh, being able to focus on the screen and the viewing angles. If you look at tilting it, it's really it's hard gone. to see. Whereas Apple products have always been really good. Look at that. You can still see everything. but it's All like, you see is the reflection of Apple. Yeah. <laughs> so. And so that's the weakest thing is the viewing angle. It's like 3D glasses. You got to look at it in such a way to get the best experience. Once you start tilting your head and going on angular uh, perspectives, you can not see crap. Uh, the speaker quality, fairly willful. It gets really hot. It's very hot. The front and the back of this device is 
it's on the level where you're actually going to at some point be like, hey, that's a little, you know, and that's not very comfortable to touch. I mean, the speakers, yeah, they're also very, they're very quiet for a um, very expensive device such as this. And everything just takes forever to load. Um, and if you go to your my computer, you do have a 32 gigabyte hard drive, 32 gigs, but you actually only get seven because just so much stuff is loaded in there without any of your really consent. I mean, you don't even get anywhere near the 32 gigabyte advertised. Let's hear your thoughts. You heard ours. YouTube.com slash goodyreader is the channel name. Reviewing uh, tablets such as these is our game. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.